Hello everyone, welcome back to our video class here at CSEC Math Tutor. We're looking at transformations, and in this lesson, we want to look at rotations. We have some objectives here. One, to describe a rotation, to calculate the rotation matrices using the origin as the center, and to calculate the coordinates of an image after a rotation about the origin, to rotate an object also about the origin. I should point out here that um, this entire lesson is just about rotation, about the origin as a center. You can use other points as center for the, for the rotation, but um, that will be covered in a separate lesson. So first up, what is a rotation? A, ro um, a rotation is a transformation in which an object is moved in a circular path. That's important. It's moved in a circular path around a center. So that is the type of transformation that we're dealing with, where an object is moved in a circular path around a center. The default direction of a rotation is anticlockwise. That is, we are going against the clock, and by going against the clock, we mean that we're going in that direction. So the default direction is anticlockwise. To perform a rotation, we need three things. We need the center, we need the direction, and we need the angle of rotation. So rotations are a turn but they can be achieved through multiple reflections. That is, if we perform two composite ref um, reflections over intersecting lines, we can get a result in rotation. Also, um, a 180 degree uh, rotation is similar to a reflection through the origin. It's important to know also that rotations are isometric. And what isometric means is that the shape will remain the same size, same lengths, same angles. Um, in just, it's just that in this case, the orientation will change, that is the place where the shape is will change, the position and orientation will change. All right, now we have some coordinate plane rules here that can help us to find the images of our points on the reflections. And when we're using a 90 degree rotation anticlockwise or 270 degree rotation clockwise, these two are the same. And what we do is that we take our point and we manipulate our point like this. We switch the coordinates, the numbers in the coordinate pair, and we change the sign of the first one. If it's a 180, we, um, we just change the signs of the numbers in the coordinate pair. And if it's a 270 degree anticlockwise, which is the same as a 90 degree clockwise, we switch the numbers in the pair and change the sign of the end one. So let's look for um, now at how to how to find the matrices that we need to do reflections if we want to use matrices. And this that we have here is our general rotation matrix. This is what we call the general rotation matrix. So if you want to memorize a matrix for rotation, this is the one that you should memorize and use it to generate these matrices over here. So these three matrices come from this one. I'm going to show you how it's done. And this is for 90 degrees, this is for 180 degrees, that's for 270. And all that we do is that we take this general matrix and plug in the 90 degree in there. So for 90 degrees, um, what we do is that we take that matrix and we say cos of 90 minus the sine of 90, uh, sine 90, cos 90. And um, what that gives you is your calculator in degree mode will tell you that the cos of 90 is 0. The sine of 90 is 1. So we have a minus 1 because of this. And we put our 1 here as well. And our 0 here. And this is the resulting matrix that we have. If you try to memorize these, it can get very confusing because they're very similar. So I wouldn't advise you to memorize these, but I would advise you to know this one. And then you can use this one to generate these. So if it's a 170 degree, for example, sorry, a 180 degree, then you'd simply put your number in there, the the 180 degree. So we're looking at cos 180 minus sine 180. Just substitute the numbers, sine 180, cos 180. And using your calculator, like I said, in degree mode, um, that's important. The cos of 180 is negative 1. Sine of 180 is 0. And so we end up with that matrix. So that's how we get our rotation matrix. We can use these matrices to help us in our rotation, or we can use the other rules that we pointed out. We're going to use both to show you um, 
how to rotate an image in a little bit. So here we have a question. Find the coordinates of an image under a rotation. So we have the, the question says the triangle RST with R23, S25, and T4 negative 1 is mapped onto R prime, S prime, T prime by a rotation through 90 degrees. We take it that is anticlockwise. What are the coordinates of the image? Now, we're going to start by using the matrix for the 90 degree matrix. Um, this is the one. So we use 0, negative 1, 1, 0. And what we're going to do with this matrix is to multiply the points on the object to get the corresponding image points. But we don't need to multiply all of them. We simply need to multiply just one. So we take our R, for example, and change it from a coordinate, write it as a column matrix. And we're going to multiply using row by column. So 0 times 2 is 0. And negative 1 times 3 gives us negative 3. Here we have 1 times 2 is 2. And 0 times 3 is 0. And that gives us an answer of negative 3. Positive 2, writing this back as a coordinate pair, negative 3, 2. And so this will be the image of R, which is R prime. Now look what happens to it. So R was 2, 3, or R is 2, 3. And R prime becomes negative 3, positive 2. So it would seem as if that we took this 2, 3, switched them around, and then changed the sign of the first one which is a very, very efficient way to go about doing 90 degree rotation. Switch the numbers around and change the sign of the first one. So we, you don't have to use the matrix, you can. And if you don't, if you don't want to use the matrix, then you can simply use the idea of switching the, the coordinates and changing the sign of the first one. So applying the same idea here, S prime is going to be, switch these, five, two, change the sign of the first one. T prime is going to be, Negative one, switch them first and change the sign of the first one. So it becomes positive one, four. So these would be the images of these points under a 90 degree rotation anticlockwise about the origin. Let's do that some more where we are going to um, find the images of this triangle through a 90 degree, a 180 degree, and a 270 degree. Um, rotation. So let's start off with the 90 degree by applying the same idea here that we can switch these coordinates and, ch and change the sign of the first one. So let's take V prime. The point is 3, 2. So we switch it to 2, 3. Change the sign of the first one. Here we have U. So U prime is 3, 6. We switch them change the sign of the first one, and W. We have 8, 2, so we switch them, and change the sign of the first one. And these are all images for triangle um, UVW prime. Now let's mark these in and um, draw it. So we have negative 2 to 3, that's V prime. We have negative 2 to 8, that's W prime, and we have negative two to negative six to three. That's um, U prime. All right. Now we can draw our um, triangle now and have a look at it. So we draw our triangle in, and we can see now the result of the rotation on the ninety degrees. So this is our ninety degree rotation. This is our object. And this is our 90 degree rotation. This is the image of it. Now let's try that again with a 180. And for the 180, this one is for 90 degrees. For the 180, remember, all that we need to do is to change the signs of the numbers in the coordinate pair. So V double prime simply becomes negative 3, negative 2. U double prime becomes negative 3, negative 6. And W double prime becomes negative 8, negative 2. Let's mark these in. Negative 3, 2, 
negative 3, negative 2 is here. That's V, double prime. Um, negative 3, negative 6 is here. And that is U, double prime. And um, W, negative 8, negative 2. This is W, double prime. Let's draw our triangle in. And you can see the image of that triangle right here the 180 degree rotation. Before I go any further, let's notice something. Notice, for example, that if you should take a line, if you should extend this line, um, this line UV prime, and extend it all the way over to the side UV, that it actually makes a right angle with your um, side UV. So UV prime makes a right angle with UV, and that tells you that is one way to spot a, um, a 90 degree rotation, that these two sides, corresponding sides, are perpendicular. Also look at this one in terms of the 180 degree, that um, corresponding sides are parallel. So UV here would be parallel to this side, U double prime, V double prime. Here and here, they're parallel. Now let's do the 270. And for the 270, what we need to do is to take these numbers according to the pattern here, switch them around, switch the XY around and change the sign of the N1. So let's do that. So for our, two, our 270 degree, um, 270 degree rotation, we take the 3, 2, switch it around. So this is our third image. It becomes 2, 3, and we change the sign of the second one, the W, third image, switch them around, change the sign of the second one, and U, we take this, switch them around, and change the sign of the second one. <clears throat> That's our triangle. Now let's um, mark the points and draw it in. So V, Triple prime is 2, negative 3. That brings us here. That's V, triple prime. W, triple prime is 2, negative 8. That's right here. I should um, make sure I put the negatives here so that to avoid the confusion. This is the negative side of the axis. All right. And um, yes, this is W, triple prime. And U, triple prime is 6, negative 3. So we have U triple prime. And now we can draw this triangle in. And, um, and look at it some more. Uh, there it is. All right. So each of these triangles, they're the same size. And the orientation is different. So it, this triangle moves here under 90 degree here under 180 degree, and now it's here under 270 degree. Now, notice something again, that for a 180 degree rotation, though the sides are parallel, if you should draw a mirror line through, through um, the center here, then you realize that this triangle is a reflection of this triangle. Oh, um, this would be an image of this, or this one would be an image of this. The same thing is true if you go through this side, then this would be a 180 degree um, reflection. So this one is, uh, let me draw a different mirror line so you can see what I'm talking about. If you should put a mirror line there, then this triangle is a reflection of this one through a 180. So when you do a 180 degree um, rotation, it actually looks like a, uh, reflection through the origin on either side. All right, let us look at some questions now to see if we can um, wrap our heads around them and see what to expect from CXE. Now, I drew a circle here to, to show you um, something else. So describe diagram shows element here and its image after undergoing a rotation. So we know it's a rotation. So what we need to do first is to state the center. Because we're dealing with 0, 0 as a center, then we have no issue here. Our center is 0, 0. The angle is 90 degree. And how do we know that it's 90 degrees? Notice if you, well, apart from experience, 
if you should take this line and extend it across, then it would meet that line. Let's just put it in a different color. It would meet, take the side LN, and notice this side is L prime N prime. Notice that it meets at a right angle there. So the sides are perpendicular. That tells us beyond doubt that that is 90 degree. You could also have remembered it that when you have an object here and you rotate it on this side, it's a 90 degree. That would work. You could also take a line and connect this N to the center and then that N prime to the center and you'll see also that you have a 90 degree there. The direction is anti-clockwise. Um, that is our default direction for um, rotations. But also in this question, the image is on this side. And when you rotate anti-clockwise, the, the image ends up on that side. So the, the um, direction is anti-clockwise. All right. So that's how you'd answer that question. The circle is just here to show you that um, the point N is moving along a circular path around the center. So if you continue um, rotating, then the other ends would be would fall along this line as well. So N is on the, on the circle, on the circumference. N prime is on the circumference, just at a different um, position on, on the circle. Let's look at this question. Similar idea. The graph shows the triangle DEF and its image D prime, E prime, F prime after a transformation. So now it doesn't tell us that it's a... Uh, it's a rotation. It's for up to this, us to, this, this, to decide if it's a rotation or not. Um, it is a rotation. And it, because you can see here, the distance from D, for example, to the center is the same as the distance there. So these two distances are the same. All right. And the angle there is, is of course, 90 degrees. Those two lines are perpendicular. So we can describe the transformation by saying the transformation is a rotation or is a 90 degree rotation about the origin or you could say zero, zero. So this transformation is a rotation. So you state that it's a rotation. Um, you state the center and you state the angle. So the transformation is a 90 degree rotation about the origin. And of course, it is anti-clockwise. That is the default direction for rotations. You can find more practice material on our website at csecmathtutor.com in the past um, exam papers and practice papers. Lots of questions there for you to practice with. Subscribe, share, learn and grow. Share with somebody who hasn't um, done this topic before or is struggling with it and needs some help. And best wishes as you continue preparing for your exam. Thank you for watching.